Hello everybody, it's me, Charlotte, and today I'm gonna teach you guys how to knit this. And this is called the Small Quilted Cross Stitch. Um, this is a four row repeat. I really wouldn't call it beginner friendly just because there's a lot going on. Um, but I do encourage beginners to try it. Um, it will teach you a lot of things. You will learn a lot of new skills, um, new stitches. I think in here you need to know how to like slip a stitch purl-wise with the yarn in the back. You need to do, know how to do a PSSO, which is a pass slip stitch over. Um, there's just a lot going on. It's a really good way to start following a pattern and, you know, getting in the rhythm if you're new. Um, real quick, before we get into this, I would like to say... Thank you for everyone who has subscribed to my channel. We have reached over 10,000 subscribers, which is, I cannot say thank you enough. So thank you. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. And if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, there will be a link in the description below. Also in the description below, you will find another link to my closed Facebook group. Um, that's completely different than my Facebook page. This is a group. It's a private group, which means you can post there. You can post your pictures, ask your questions, and no one on your friends list through Facebook will be able to see what you're posting or what you're asking. So if you have Christmas gifts that you're working on and you would like some feedback or some advice, feel free. You can post those pictures there on the Facebook group page. It's called Knit, Crochet, and Craft and no one will be able to see what you're up to. So if you'd like to do that, there will be a link in the description below for the closed Facebook group called Knit, Crochet, and Craft if you would like to join that group. All right, I think I've talked enough. Let's get into how to knit the small quilted cross stitch. Okay. Oh, and this is the back of the stitch. This is the front Pay no attention to this bind off. I was playing around with different types of bind offs and I actually like this one better. I don't know if you can see that. Um, this was just a regular bind off. Knit one, knit two, pass the one over. You know, the regular old bind off. This one was a little different. I read it somewhere in a pattern a couple weeks ago and I thought I would try it. I actually do like it better for this, but there is no give, there is no stretch. It's a very tight, sturdy bind off, so keep that in mind. I will show you how to do this um, at the end of this video if you stick around. Um, but yeah, it's very tight, but I do like the look of it better than that. Personal preference. All right, let's get started. To begin this, you need to cast on multiples of four plus one. So if you have no clue what that means, I'm going to show you. Four plus one. Your slip knot counts as one. Now you want to do multiples of four. So one, that counts as one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You just cast on multiples of four, and at the very end, when you've cast on the amount of stitches that you want to cast on, then at the very end you add your plus. In this case it's a plus one, so I'm going to do one extra stitch at the end. So that was multiples of four plus one. I like to cut my leftover yarn here just so it stays out of the way. I don't know if you've ever knit with your tail yarn, but it can really ruin your day. So I try to cut it so it's a little shorter. All right. Row one, like I said, this is a four row repeat, and I will have the four rows in the description below so you can write them out and follow along. Um, so yeah, you can check out the description below for the different rows the pattern. Okay, row one is knit one, and then you're going to purl one. All right, and that's the repeat. It's purl, purl one, knit one. You're gonna end on a knit one. So it's just knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. One by one ribbing, think of it like that. And I'm trying to go slow here because I know a lot of people like to knit along, and I think that is great. That's why I never 
cut my videos, I just go ahead and knit the whole row with you guys. So for those who are experienced, this may be boring and I do apologize, but there are people out there that need some help and like to knit along. So I'm gonna go slow and we're going to knit along. So we're gonna do some one by one ribbing for row one and we're gonna end on a knit one. Okay, so that was row one. Row two is we're going to start with a purl stitch. So purl, you keep your yarn in front, you take your right needle and you insert it into the front of that stitch on your left needle. You wanna take your working yarn that's in front, wrap it counterclockwise around your right needle, push it through and off. That's a purl. Now, what you need to do is slip a stitch purl-wise with yarn in back. So let's go through this slowly. I put my yarn in back. I'm going to slip this stitch purl-wise, which means I'm going to take my right needle, stick it in the front of that stitch that's on my left needle. I'm going to slide it off. That's slipping a stitch purl-wise with yarn in back. Okay, next is we have to do a KFB. Now a KFB is we're going to knit this stitch, the next stitch as normal, but we're gonna leave it on our left needle. We're gonna take our right needle, swing it around, and we're gonna go into the back of that stitch. The KFB, which means knit through the front and the back loop of the stitch. So, we went through the back loop, we're gonna wrap our yarn, bring it through, now we can pull it off, okay? Next stitch, we're going to knit as normal, And then remember that stitch we passed purl-wise with the yarn in the back? That's going to be the fourth stitch from this one. So one, two, three, and four. We're gonna pick up that slip stitch and we're gonna pass it over the three stitches that were on our needle, okay? That's called a PSSO, pass the slip stitch over. So in case you didn't know that, now you do. And we're going to end this little sequence here with a purl one, okay? So I'm gonna show you again, we're gonna go a little faster. We ended with a purl one. Now we're gonna start all over, which is we're gonna slip one purl wise with our yarn in the back. We're gonna do a KFB, which means knit through the front and the back of that stitch. And then we're going to knit one. And then we're gonna pass that slip stitch over. It's gonna be the fourth one from here, so one, two, three, and four, pick it up, pull it over those three stitches, and then you're gonna end with a purl one, okay? We are almost done, guys. Again, we're gonna start over by slipping stitch purl-wise with yarn in back. We're gonna do a KFB. We're going to knit one. We're gonna take that slip stitch and pass it over these three. So one, two, three, four. It's gonna be the fourth one. Pick it up, pass it over, and then we're gonna end with a purl one. Okay, that was row two. Row three is just like row one. We're going to do one by one ribbing. So we're gonna start with a knit one and a purl one and a knit one, and a purl one. And we're gonna continue that until the very end. We are almost done, guys, then I can show you how to bind off. And I think you guys are gonna find this bind off. Like I said, it's a very tight bind off, but it's sturdy, it has no give, so it's not stretchy at all, but it looks nice, I think, and it's easy, so show you how to do that. We're just gonna finish off our one by one ribbing here, which is just knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and we're gonna end with a knit one. That was row three. Now row four is gonna go something like this. It's gonna start with a purl one. Again, you wanna make sure your working yarn's in the front, your needle's in the back. Put it into that stitch with, in the front of that stitch. Wrap it counterclockwise. Okay, that was a purl one. Now we're going to knit one. 
and we're going to purl one. So the first three stitches were purl one, knit one, purl one. Now we're going to start our pattern. Put our yarn in the back and we're going to slip one purl wise like we did on the other round or the other row. Then we're going to do a KFB which is knit through the front and the back. And then we're going to knit one and then we're going to pass that slip stitch over and it's going to be the fourth stitch. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to pick it up and we're going to slide it over those three stitches that were on our needle. Slide it off. And then we're going to end with a purl one. Okay? We're going to slip, start over again. We're going to slip purl wise with our working yarn in the back. We're going to do a KFB which is knit through the front and the back. Then we're going to knit one. Then we're going to pass that slip stitch over and it's going to be one, two, three, the fourth one. Pick it up, slide it over those three, and we're going to end with a purl for that sequence. Now when you have just two stitches left on your needle on the fourth row, what you're going to do is knit one and purl one. And that is the four rows you need to know. And you just start over with row one again. Now to bind off, this is how I, this is the bind off I used for half of this one. This was just the regular good old fashioned bind off that I think it's the first one we all learn. Um, that was this one. It's kind of bulky as you can see, but this one is much different. I think it really works with this pattern, especially if you don't need it to be stretchy because like I said, I can't say it again. It is not stretchy. It has no give whatsoever. It's a very tight bind off, but I think it looks nice. It really finishes the edge. And if you can see, if my camera will focus, I've been having camera problems lately, guys. That's why I haven't had a video out in a while. Um, it kind of like looks like a braid. So I think that looks pretty cool, but again, no give there. So it's not stretchy, but I'm going to show you how to do it. You want to bind off after your fourth row. So instead of starting a new sequence of the four rows you just want to bind off when you're finished. And what I do is you're going to knit that first stitch like normal. And then you're going to slide it off. You're going to put it back on your left needle like that. And then you're going to knit two together. Like I said, I don't remember where I read this, but I did read this bind off somewhere in a pattern somewhere. I can't remember which one. You knit those two together, and again, you take the stitch that's now on your right needle and you put it back on your left needle, and then you just knit two together. Again, the stitch that's on your right needle, you want to take it off, put it back on your left needle, and knit two together. Again, take it off your right needle, put it back on your left needle, and knit two together. And you just keep doing that. You just kind of don't want any stitches on that right needle whatsoever. If there's a stitch on that right needle, put it back on your left, knit two together. And you just keep doing that until you're at the very, very end. And I'll show you what I mean. But again, I cannot stress enough. I don't want you guys to think that this is a stretchy bind off or anything like that. No, it's a very sturdy bind off. It'd be good for like placemats and washcloths, something that you don't want to stretch too much or at all. Um, because this bind off, like I said, is not stretchy at all. So we're almost done here. You just keep taking that stitch that's on the right needle, put it back on the left, and then you knit two together. And here's our final two. We're going to knit together. And this looks horrible because it's only one little thing, but cut your yarn here. Again, sharp scissors. I'm going to invest in some one day. Okay. And there you have it. You just weave in your ends and that's it. That's how I bind off. And that is how you knit the small quilted cross stitch. Like I said, it's a little complicated, especially if you're new, but just, I will have the directions, the pattern written down below in the description. You guys can write that out follow along, keep track of where you are in your rows. You should have no problems. Go slow. And it's okay if you make a mistake or mess up. Just keep trying. It's no big deal. Um, 
If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, my, my Facebook page, there will be a link in the description below. And if you'd like to join my private closed Facebook group called Knit, Crochet, and Crafts, there will be a link in, that descript in the description below as well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you all for watching. Um, I've missed you guys. It's been a while. But um, yeah, so until next time, I hope you all have a super wonderful, fabulous day, and happy knitting. Bye.